Hello there everyone, welcome to Yosakura. In this video, I just wanted to share with you a couple of initial setups that you can do inside Nuke before starting a project. These things I had not shared in the previous videos, so I just wanted to put it across before I start doing any actual compositing inside the package. So let's uh, switch over to Nuke and get started. So inside Nuke now, the first thing to start up with would be setting your project. So for that you can go into edit. At the bottom you have project settings or the shortcut key S which brings out your project properties. So here you can have to set a couple of things. I'll just go through them uh, briefly. You have the project name, whatever name you want to give to your project and the directory in which your project is going to set. So let me just navigate to that. I'll just go into Eosacro, the current thing which I'm working with. I'll go into this demo project directory which I've created. So here you can see that there is this demo.autosave file which is already there. I'll just give in this uh, project the name saying let's say demo2 and enter. So basically I just created a project name called demo2 under this directory here and next apart from that I have some comment section where I can add in any kind of comments I have about the current shot or current script that I'm working with. Next I have frame range, the input and the output of the frame range. Next I have a lock range which basically tells if I let's say bring in a footage which has about 5000 frames, 0 to 5000 frames full frame range. As soon as I bring it in, Nuke will automatically read it in and try to change this value to match up that frame range. So if I don't want Nuke to be doing that, I can tell it to lock the range so that whatever range I provide here is the final default one and it's not going to change it on its own. So that's an option. Next you have frames per second. That default uh, belongs to how many frames you want to play per second. So I'm not going to get into that. The main thing I want you to understand is the uh, format. For your project. So format is nothing but the size of your project. If you are in the viewer you can see that your viewer is not exactly uh, like let's say square or circular. It's this rectangle size and it always has this name at the bottom. This is basically your format. At the In this full size format uh, drop down you can just see there are several uh, options that you have and anything which you change it to gives you different options over here in the viewer or different uh, displays here in the viewer basically what you're trying to tell us what is the size of your output is what you're setting here the entire project's output size so if you have any specific output in mind like for example uh, I know Nuke is majority used for compositing but um, I've even used it for ma many times for web designing and such uh, which is not common uh, so you might want to create your own sizes for that you have this uh, option here called new you can click on that it opens up this dialog box where you can type in a name for whatever format you want to create so I'll call this a demo format and I can give in any size in width and height uh, which I want to work with so let's say for example I wanted to work with HD which is uh, 1280 by 720 so I have this HD uh, 16 is to 9 aspect ratio so you can add in any of these and then at the bottom it actually shows you what you're working with you can go to any of these uh, presets and see how what exact values they have if you want to edit them you can just click on edit and change in any values you are looking for so okay you know how to set formats but what is the actual use of setting the format in the first place well the basic use is uh, once you have set it most of the things you actually create inside Nuke will come in at this format which you have set so right now the format is HD na 1080p so if I create let's say a uh, checkerboard it automatically has a root format assigned to it and you can see it's the HD format now instead if I let's say change this to 4k cinemascope immediately you can see that the checkerboard change the size and automatically the root format is updated in the checkerboard properties so it's very nice to have options of changing the root format or the project settings and it being updated everywhere throughout your script so this is kind of a useful feature now apart from this let's say I actually go ahead and create a new format over here so I just create some format I just type in some number values in here 
I have no idea what they are. I'll just click OK and just give it some name. So I just created a format by name FGJ and it has some values on it. But this is, let, let's say it's a footage which I just bought into Nuke. I want Nuke, entire project from Nuke to actually have the size from this image, which is this uh, value which I've added in. So to get that, if I just open up the project settings and go into the full size format, you can see that the options, whatever I've added in, have been automatically updated. All the as soon as you create a new format, that format will be added in to your project settings, and you can just click on it, and you immediately have that setting transferred on throughout your script. So this is quite a useful feature, and uh, it's definitely useful to set it up from the beginning itself, so that whatever you create comes in at the right size. So this was about setting up a proper format. Now. In the next, I wanted to show you how exactly you can write out image sequences. So to show you how to write out image sequences, let me start by actually uh, creating something which I can write out. What I'll do is I'll take a simple checkerboard. Let me connect it to the viewer. You can see it's a simple small checkerboard over there. I'm going to key a couple of values so that once they are keyed, I can write out the image sequences as if they are being keyed or animated. So for example, I have this uh, size slider here at the bottom uh, above. So I'm going to keep it at one value. I'll just right click in here and tell set key and automatically a key has been added at the fifth frame. I'll go to let's say the 40th frame, change the size and automatically another keyframe is being added. So you can see that from 1 to 40. I have a simple animation which is going about. I'll actually come back to the frame 1 and add in some extra size so there is slight variation. Okay, so now if I hit play you can see that there is some kind of variation which is happening and it's happening till 40th frame. So I want to write out the 1 to 40 frames which I have created just now. So we know how to bring things into Nuke let's see how to write them out. You have to again go back to your image nodes and here you have the right node or the shortcut is W. You can click on the right node and it gives you the simple right node. You can just connect it to anything which you want. So to write things out all you need to tell us what exactly is the file name and the location of the file that you want to write out to. So I'll just click on the folder link. I'll navigate to my demo and here I'll just go to this test folder and hit save. So here I just need to give in the name for my file sequence. So the name convention by default is uh, like most of the time we just use name.number.extinction. It works very well with pretty much any software you can use so I definitely recommend using the same. So I'm going to do the same kind of uh, numbering right now. So I'm going to call this file dot number so for the number sequence, there are different ways that you can actually get it done. Uh, the older method in Nuke was uh, percent, um, any number you want. So let's say 0, 4, D for digits, dot, any file format you want. So let's say PNG. And immediately once you do it, uh, this is going to be written out as a file sequence with four digits padding, uh, four digit uh, with padding and written out to this format. But this is kind of confusing for most people. So instead there is an easier method. Just put in hashes wherever you want numbers. So I just put in four hashes which means uh, it's going to give me four numbers in there. So uh, I just gave, told it to write out this image sequence in this location. Apart from this, what else do I have? I have this things called channels at the top. We have already discussed channels. It's not just RGB cha RGBA channels, sorry, which we usually see, but there could be other channels which we uh, have in our project. So you might not just want RGBA channels, but you might want all the channels. Like let's say you're writing out an EXR file. So if I have an EXR file, I can definitely make use of all the channels. So make sure you set your numbers of channels properly and then set your file, uh, the location, the fr frame range, the padding and all that set up. And then once you're done with this, you can just go at the bottom here and hit render. And pretty much anything which is connected to this right node at the bottom gets rendered out. So 
you have different options over here so you can tell from which frame to which frame you want rendered out so let's say I tell I want it rendering from the first frame to the 40th frame and I'll tell OK immediately when I do that it shows me a progress bar and it tells me how long it's going to take to render out the entire frame so let me just open up the frame sequence which is just rendered in Nuke and uh, from Nuke and show you how it looks like as you can see here I have the image sequence rendered out and uh, you can easily observe all the details on them plus you can also see that all these square marks the watermarking which uh, new PLE edition adds in also get written out so you can't actually use it for any kind of production purposes so basically this is how easy it is to write out image sequences you can see the naming convention is maintained it has file dot four numbers dot extinction but the extinction is hidden in Windows Explorer right now so you can't actually see that so this is how easy it is to write out image sequences so right now we know how exactly to set project formats and then we know how to write out image sequences the last step in this video is understand how to set up proxies which is one of the most important things that you can do if you're working with high resolution footages so let's see how to do that next okay so the last thing I want to talk about on this video is about creating proxies so let's first start by understanding what exactly proxies are what I'll do is I uh, created this uh, a uh, simple image sequence which we already seen before there is this uh, simple ball which is bouncing in on the screen and I want to show you first what exactly proxy is and what it does before I actually get carried away with uh, showing you how to create proxies so I just open up my project settings as you can see it's a simple 1280 720hd so what I'll do is uh, if you see here I already have this 1280 720 format over here because this video is already loaded I'll just click on that and make sure my project setting is set to this next thing I'm going to tell is a proxy mode uh, set to scale which is a half of the entire value now what exactly proxy mode does is basically instead of reading the entire size frame it actually uh, goes about uh, reading a smaller version of the whole thing so that things become faster so let's just say you have a huge essay and instead of an essay you just had to read a summary basically you can do it faster so on a computer proxy is the same thing it's a replacement which is of a smaller version uh, so you can work with it faster so you have a button over here in your viewport which gives you the proxy and you can see some simple changes when you're working with this uh, when the default numbers are there it's uh, 1280 720 as soon as I turn on proxy it goes to 640 360 which basically means I'm turning it to half the value and you can see the ball you can see pretty much all the pixels on it and now if I turn off my proxy you can see that it has a bit more detail so basically proxy reduces the amount of detail in the video so that is what we want to create but uh, just using a proxy mode like scale which nuke directly gives is not very intuitive because still the file is being read from the hard disk and it will make things a bit slow so instead what we try to do is if you have a file uh, we are going to create a smaller version of the file and write it out so that we can read it back in as a proxy format so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this apply a read note to this one uh, sorry the right note to this one and write out this bound sequence with a proxy so I can just go into this file or I can just tell I want the proxy written out so to set this proxy all I'm going to do is uh, instead of just writing out a file I'm just going to go into this proxy uh, box and uh, uh, set it to a particular folder that I want on my project I'll go into demo and create a new folder called proxy and here I'm going to save out the file as a proxy again so basically I'm writing out the file proxy.number.png I have not done any other special settings on it all I've told is the proxy format which has to be written out is this now where exactly is the size of this proxy coming in that is exactly what you're seeing in the viewport whenever my proxy is on so a couple of main things to note I have written it out in the proxy section 
and you can see that the name over here on the right now tells proxy dot uh, 0027.png because I'm on the 22nd frame any frame I go to that's the frame it shows you on the right node next thing to note if I go to my project settings pressing S on the keyboard the proxy scale is set to 0.5 I can set it to let's say 0.25 immediately my size in the viewport or the viewer has immediately decreased uh, from 640 it's now down to 320 so basically whatever proxy scale I set here is a scale which is going to be rendered out from here so I just take on a read note set my project uh, proxy settings in, in my project I've added a write node only put in the proxy location and now when I'm going to hit render I'm going to make sure this use proxy option is on and then set my frame range so let's say I have a hundred frames I'll type in 1 to 100 or any number of frames which I want and then when I hit OK it goes ahead and starts rendering this and once it's rendered if I go into my folder into proxy you can see my proxy render which I just said is rendered out if I select any of them you can see that it's 320 1080 file format and it's reading it in but uh, I have just created all of this but what exactly is the use of having created this proxy how exactly am I going to use it because if I just wanted proxy I could have set it in my project settings here by turning on this scale and it would be using it but that is kind of computationally heavy instead what I'm going to do is this read node which is there I'm going to come back to this read node itself and tell that okay there is this proxy option too over here and I actually want to use the proxy I just created inside this so I'm going to go in here and actually load in my proxy so on the demo proxy I'm going to load in the sequence and basically this is the image sequence which is going to be used whenever I turn on my proxy and whenever it's off it's automatically going to use the file from here at the top so I basically have my proxy created and ready to use so uh, the let me just recap the main things which I did in this video first thing is I showed you how to set up your project format for doing that you can go into your project settings under this you have project uh, format over here you can choose any format you want or you can create your own one over here at the bottom if you have loaded in a footage or created a format on any of the nodes already that format will be available here as a blank one you can select it edit it and save it out so that was setting up the project next thing I showed you was how to write out image sequences you can go into your image node section you have write nodes you can take any write node you just need to specify where you want the file written out and where you want the proxy written out please note that you can actually write out a file or proxy anything at the same time and next thing once you know how to write this out all I did was set the project settings in such a way that I know what size proxy I wanted instead of typing in the file value this time I just gave in the proxy value and instead of the full resolution file it gave me a simple proxy to work with now once it gave me the proxy I went back to my read node and on the read node specified where the proxy is coming from and automatically the proxy format is set for me so it is as simple as that um, hopefully you understood whatever I did just now this is quite a basic video and as you could have already observed there were a lot of changes in this video I'll be doing a lot more changes in the next couple of videos this is just a test rehearsal uh, per se for the whole thing which I'm doing right now uh, starting in a couple of days I'll be actually redoing all the videos from the beginning using all the suggestions which I've got till date to improve them completely so hopefully you guys will uh, uh, be able to learn something at that time whatever suggestions you have about this video please let me know I know I'm going a bit too fast but it's uh, kind of like a trial phase which even I'm learning about so please give me any suggestions and feedbacks which you have and I'll see you in the next video goodbye